Hey, so guys, I want to talk to you today about something that I believe is very, very important, especially for right this minute, and that is the Xbox Series X, Series S, and the PS5. So we have a launch coming up here in the next few days, the 10th for the Xbox, and of course the 12th for the PlayStation. And I wanna dive deep and give you guys everything that you need to know before you go out and pick up your console, reserve your games, or sit down to play, or sit down at that computer getting ready to buy your console. And if there's going to be any left for you on a launch day, all right, let's get into it. So there's a ton of information out there right now about launch day and tons of conflicting kind of messages to everybody, especially with the release of something like uh, the RTX 3080, 3090, 3070. And it's just added this confusion to the world about uh, how this is gonna play out for launch day. And I know I've spoken to quite a few stores that are doing uh, pre-launch or essentially launches for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox. And they're well prepared for you guys coming to pick up your equipment on launch day. So uh, that's one of the reasons I wanna make this video because it's very stressful when we see launches like the RTX go out and there's nothing to be seen for miles and miles and miles. You can even try to buy from other countries and you'll be lucky if you pay a premium. I'm talking 30, 40, 50% more or above to be able to get your uh, device on launch day or sometime within you know the first month. I mean, we're going on two months now with the RTX series. So that's something I want to clear up with you guys. Go over some of the myths, the legends, uh, the whatabouts, and hopefully we can put this to rest. So on launch day for the 10th and the 12th, there's a nice smooth launch and everybody is happy. So this is what I've found. So first and foremost, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the games coming out. Uh, we have 30 games fully optimized on the Xbox Series X uh, and Series S for launch day. That is a pretty big deal considering uh, that I don't think there's nearly as many for the PlayStation 5. Uh, but are they going to be optimized for what you actually bought the console for? You know, still to be seen, I have talked to some of these retailers and they haven't even seen any games show up yet, uh, but I know digitally these games will be available launch day. So if you can get your hands on them, uh, a hard copy, a collector's edition, special edition, whatever it is, awesome. I'm sure that'll go smooth, but I haven't really heard too much about that. So. Uh, day one, Xbox Series X and S optimized titles. What we have is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Borderlands 3, uh, Bright Memory 1.0. We have Cuisine Royale, Smart Delivery. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Uh, <laughs> Dead by Daylight, Devil May Cry 5, and the list goes on. So there's quite a few uh, here that are gonna be available on launch day. It looks like there's some definite crossover. Now they're saying it's optimized. A lot of these are actually, uh, you know, previous Xbox titles. So, um, you know, that's great and all. Uh, I'm happy that they're optimizing them for the titles, but I know games like 2K21, for example, uh, those are going to be almost exclusive for uh, not exclusive, but it's gonna be very much optimized for better resolution, a uh, little bit higher frames. I don't think it's gonna be crazy high frames, but 60 frames per second, uh, HDR content, uh, and some of the other games may not be. Like Borderlands 3, it's questionable whether or not that's gonna be HDR content, right? Um, so let's go back, we'll kind of take a look here. Another couple games that I know for sure will be kind of better is gonna be Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla. Now that is more than likely going to be an HDR title uh, or it is going to be a higher frame rate title, a 4K resolution title, that sort of thing. Uh, so these are the games, these are the things you wanna look for. When you're looking at games, get the ones on launch day 
spend your money where it counts. Buy the games that are going to give you, obviously get the game that you enjoy, hands down. But if you're debating between Assassin's Creed and Borderlands 3, uh, definitely go for the game that was made for the Xbox Series X and Series S. The thing I really wanted to get into, guys, was some of the specs here uh, and in kind of a, what you can expect per console, right? So here we are, true 4K gaming up to 120 frames per second and 8K HDR, high dynamic range. Uh, is that going to be better than the PlayStation 5? Well, it still remained to be seen. They're both using a Zen 2 platform for their CPU. Uh, and of course, they are using uh, the architecture for the graphics from AMD. So I don't know how they could really compete against each other. They're using the same components. Uh, so we're still kind of going to test that. Now, on the 12th this month, I'm getting the PlayStation 5. I'm gonna be testing 4K on a true 10-bit HDR OLED. Uh, it's not gonna be HDMI 2.1, but it's a full 10-bit panel. Uh, there's no issues here. It's gonna be the best display for HDR that money can buy right now, and I challenge you to find one better. It's the Sony A8G or yeah, there's the A9G or the A9S that's coming out or the A8H, but they're all essentially very, very, very similar and they use the same panel. So uh, they're boasting a lot of things here, a lot of surround sound capability, 3D audio, uh, all that fun stuff. And this is something I wanted to touch on with you guys because uh, surround sound capability uh, and, and newer formats are really enhancing how we watch movies, how we play games. And if you're like me, you're gonna use your console for all those things. You're gonna use it for your streaming apps. You're gonna use it for your Blu-ray player. Uh, you're gonna use it for YouTube, right? And if you're watching something that's mastered uh, for DTS audio, uh, 3D, spatial sound, whatever it is through the game, uh, you want to be able to utilize that and if you have a sound system in your home You don't want to have to hook it up awkwardly through all this stuff. You want to plug it in set it forget it um, And this is something that I think Xbox has done better than PlayStation 5. They really marketed and and Compatibility wise they've done a lot with sound now. Of course. This is just their 3d spatial sound for gaming, but they do uh, actually support other audio formats so I know a huge thing right now. Now, something I wanna talk about with you guys, and I don't know a ton about, um, you know, the, the inner details, right, on the storage uh, chips for the Xbox or the PlayStation 5 for that matter, because they're just coming out. But what I have heard is that the Xbox Microsoft is pretty much making their own proprietary SSDs for the Xbox, huge downside because if you need to upgrade your storage, you have to go buy an expensive SSD, probably $200 plus direct from, from Microsoft and you can't source a third party. And I know for certain uh, that PlayStation is actually gonna be licensing through other companies or certifying other companies' SSDs uh, to, be, to work with the PlayStation 5. Now, it's no secret that what they're using is a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2, uh, which you know in the in the PC world we've had for a little while. We know that speed. We're aware. We know where to buy these things. Heck, we probably have them in our computers. It'd be nice to just be able to plug one in. Uh, but with Xbox, uh, Microsoft will not allow you to do those things. So enough on specs, you guys. I think we've covered quite a bit here. And let's talk about availability. So I wanna to talk to you about this article from Tom's Hardware. They did a phenomenal job here, kind of laying out where you can buy these consoles, who has them available, what dates we're gonna see additional inventory come in. Uh, and it's definitely looking, and, and I'm kind of hearing the same thing, right? I've been able to talk to some retailers and essentially what I'm hearing is there may be limited stock availability on launch day it was kind of like some of the accessories that came in they sold out almost immediately uh, or at least for pre-order they sold out immediately and then when they came in there was a little bit of inventory still available at the stores 
Uh, so you could go order them online, pick them up. I know that's gonna be a huge thing this year and Tom's Hardware mentions it. They're gonna have limited capability for online orders or store pickup. Don't just go run into the store to see if it's available at the store. A lot of these retailers, Target, Amazon, Best Buy, uh, they're probably not gonna have it out on the floor. It'll be in a special inventory, so order online. And then it looks like uh, we're also seeing that November 27th could be a, an additional date for more consoles to come out. This is around the Xbox. Uh, could be a little bit different for the PlayStation. I would imagine November 27th would be the latest date they're available because that only gives about three weeks to buy for Christmas. Uh, and that's gonna be their biggest haul of the year. So they're probably putting out triple the stock uh, for that December month because they're gonna do so much business in that time frame. Uh, the one downside I'm seeing here is if you ordered an Xbox Series X from Amazon, which is a total bummer, uh, it sounds like you may get it late. So come check out this article, see if you got that notification from Amazon. Uh, and let's go ahead, let's move on to the PlayStation 5. So I've been checking out some of the PlayStation 5 titles for launch day, what's available, what's gonna be coming out shortly after launch day, because on the 12th, as you guys already know, we'll be doing a live event at 1 p.m. Uh, so I want you to hit that notification bell right now so you get notified when we go live on the 12th, because we'll be covering, we have three different games, well, technically two games, We'll be checking in on a third to see if it's available. Uh, and then we'll be testing out some features, some accessories uh, on that PlayStation for you guys to check out with us. So, but these are the games here and I can tell you what's available at launch and what's not, or at least for the most part, I believe I can. So not all of these games are available at launch. We have uh, Spider-Man, so Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, a uh, huge, huge epic game here that's coming out very well marketed. Sony's been marketing this for many, uh, many months now. So uh, that is going to be a release day uh, title. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, I don't believe is going to. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, I'm not sure that is, or Gran Turismo 7. Uh, but I do believe Sackboy is definitely going to be a launch day event. Returnal, I don't think so. Demon Souls is 100% gonna be launch day. Uh, Destruction All-Stars, not 100% certain on that guy. Uh, could be a launch day, could be not. FIFA uh, 21, I believe, is launch day. 2K21 is launch day. Call of Duty Cold War is the day after launch day. And then most of these other games are gonna be later in the year. So, but we are seeing, you know, about 30 different titles all optimized. And here's the thing. Um, not all of the games, just like Xbox, are gonna be like the 4K HDR resolution. The games I have for the 12th will be that 4K HDR for you guys to check out. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with what I see. These seem to be somewhat uh, unique titles. Uh, there's definitely not uh, all of these titles available for Xbox and I would be a little more excited about the games here for PlayStation than I am about Xbox because I'm a PC gamer and I've, I've had those Xbox titles for many, many, many months now, almost a year on some of them. Borderlands 3, don't put that in your top three. I've been playing that game since it launched nine months ago. <laughs> so, you know, probably longer than that, probably launched a year ago. And, you know, so it is what it is. Okay, kind of going over what the PS5 boasts. Uh, they also have uh, some, some audio features. I'll get into that in a second, but uh, talking about their lightning speed capability, their SSD, it's ultra speed SSDs. And it is, it's gonna be super fast. It's PCIe Gen 4, massive speed capability. Uh, look it up if you need to know the exact speed here, but it's going to whoop your hard drive capability and uh, outperform most standard SSDs. So that's gonna allow uh, the large maps uh, to transfer data very, very quickly. So uh, you can see here, they're showcasing uh, the controller, they've got the console, they've got the headset, the remote, uh, and then the docking station uh, on the side as well. So uh, a lot of accessories that are kind of uh, fitting the theme here and a bit more than I saw for the Xbox. The Xbox didn't seem to have all those accessories. So 
stunning games. There's going to be ray tracing, uh, 4K gaming, up to 120 frames per second, HDR technology, and 8K output. Well, yeah, I mean, it's HDMI 2.1, so you'll definitely get 8K capability. So the PS5 console, and then we have the PS5 digital edition. Now this isn't something I covered with the Xbox, um, although they, they're both very similar. So this is what the digital edition or the Xbox Series S is. Essentially you're getting a console without a disc reader in it. Um, so all that's doing is eliminating space. They don't have to, uh, the chassis doesn't have to be the same size. They don't have to put in as much uh, technology into the console itself. Therefore, they can kind of take out some of that cost, uh, lower the cost by like say $100, make them a lot faster for you, put them, they assemble a lot faster so the la labor is lower, and you can get something like the PS5 for you know 300 bucks now instead of 400, so, or 500, whatever, whatever it is, right? And that's the same thing with the Xbox Series S. Uh, it's digital only. So beware when you buy these digital editions or the Xbox Series S, you can't actually put a game in it. You have to buy your content digitally. And there we are. And then they just kind of boast their games. They boast their games. So let's check on availability. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can check it out. So here we are, we're on Tom's Guide, and thanks Tom's Guide for making this awesome update for the PlayStation 5. Uh, there's definitely some good information in here, and, and kind of going back again, I, I'm seeing a lot of the same information here uh, with the retailers I was able to talk to, uh, and definitely the other articles I was seeing, and the trends that we're kind of getting, uh, you know, for availability of accessories and games and pre-order capabilities. So we, we kind of tell exactly where everything's going to land. But one of the things I want to key on, key in and but one of the things I want to key in on here is the same thing uh, that I saw for the Xbox. So let's pop over here. So on launch day, what we're going to see with the PS5 is very similar to the Xbox Series X and S. We're gonna see limited stock from these retailers that may only be online. Slim, slim, slim chance it's gonna be in store uh, for the PS5, whether it's the standard or the digital edition. Uh, so keep an eyeball out. On launch day, there's gonna be a couple extras. Think about this. The reason there's a couple extras is people pre-order and their card doesn't get uh, fully processed. The money just kind of gets verified that it's there and then a week before, two weeks before the launch, when they verify they go to run the card, it gets declined. Or maybe the other option is uh, somebody pre-ordered, uh, but then they found another avenue and they got one somewhere else, right? Maybe someone else bought them one for them or they decided not to go with it altogether, which I highly doubt, but maybe that's the case. Uh, well, that means that store is still getting shipped one of those PlayStations, potentially, especially if someone canceled their order and they're gonna have it available on launch day. So keep an eye out. There's gonna be one, two, three that pop up in a specific retailer. It's not gonna be many, but if you can find one, you can get that on launch day. And it's also telling you uh, here, which uh, obviously they're gonna have inventory for Black Friday. Uh, now, most retailers aren't going to be open Thursday. They're going to be open Friday. So keep an eyeball out. Be the first one there at the store. Maybe you'll get it. Uh, if it's going to be a door buster, it may not be available online uh, or at least to the extent that it is in store. I don't know. Depends on if they're going to be limiting traffic in, in stores or not this year. So the other thing it does mention is accessories. Accessories were sold out for a little while, but I'm seeing them trickle in. So definitely do your research. Uh, and see if you can find some accessories. Um, because if you were like me on the day that the um, 3D audio headphones came out, they were sold out almost everywhere that same night. But then the next morning, we saw some retailers have some, uh, specifically Best Buy had a few, and uh, my buddy went and picked up a pair uh, that day. He had to drive about 30 minutes, but he got a pair of them before they sold out entirely. So my guess is those will be coming in very, very quickly uh, for you guys. Things like that, the docking stations, 
uh, so on and so forth. So, well, I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, I do want to break down kind of my overall thoughts. Don't stress about the PlayStation 5. Don't stress about the Xbox Series X and S. Uh, you know, whatever's going on, they're going to take care of it. And even if you have to be a day late, uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. I know that's tough to hear. Uh, I, I would hate to not get this you know item this long awaited console on launch day the 10th or the 12th but the reality is that a lot of the games that will be available may not be uh you know the 4k 120 frames per second hdr games anyways and it's going to be similar to if you're running pc with about mid-level specs in it um so you can always partner up with somebody that is getting one uh, you know, figure out what they're doing on launch day, jump in on their launch party, be involved, uh, but don't stress out. I think 95% of people, 98% of people are gonna get uh, their products and we're gonna see inventory coming out in the weeks following. So rest assured you guys, everything is getting taken care of, but that's my two cents. I wanted to chime in. I see all these videos out there uh, talking about products and, and, and availability and inventory and stock and accessories. And uh, there's just so much information. And the reality is it doesn't matter which console you go with. Pick the one that you like. Now, um, the, my own opinion is I think the PS5 is going to have better games. But I do think Xbox and Microsoft are going to do more with their console to make it be the media center for your home. They're making it more like uh, an actual receiver, like a, a switching unit uh, that has more compatibility with sound formats, more compatibility uh, with video formats. Uh, so on and so forth. I know it sounds a little weird because Sony's pretty good, but at least that's the vibe I'm getting from them. Uh, you know, that's where I see them going with their marketing is, hey, this is the console that everybody needs in their center, whether it's for the kids, whether it's for the family, whether it's for personal use. For Sony, I'm seeing play the absolute best titles that you can uh, and have the best gaming experience on our console. So, Maybe you fit into one of those categories and maybe I'm entirely wrong uh, and I'm okay with that. Uh, but that's what I see. Those are my two cents. And you know, as always, you guys, if you made it this far in this video, uh, like this video, share this video, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you can see when we go live and I'll catch you in the next video.